Hello and welcome to South Florida. Here we are on the beautiful and stunning Atlantic coast and it's just off Palm Beach. We are at the Palm Beach Masters in the winter equestrian capital of the world, Wellington, South Florida. The Palm Beach Masters playing host to the first of three shows this year, taking in the Longines FEI Jumping World Cup qualifier this weekend, Longines FEI Jumping Nations Cup of the United States of America in 10 days' time, and North America's newest five-star, the Palm Beach Open, in March. The Masters today plays host to the pre-qualifier for that World Cup class on Sunday. 60 athletes at the show, including more than half a dozen career World Cup finals winners, lining out to seek one of the 40 starting places on Sunday afternoon. So, three-time World Cup champion Rodrigo Pessoa is going to lead us off in this jump ball format class, followed in by the likes of Karen Polly, a five-star winner here in the past in Wellington, Florida. Youngest ever World Cup champion Mario Deloria is followed by countryman Ben Aslin. Laura Kreit, Lauren Huff, U.S. Olympians, Paris Sellen, Margie Goldstein Engel, one of the most successful riders of all time here in the United States of America, followed by a young man from Mexico, Carlos Hank Guerrero. Yuri Mansour of Brazil riding here in the U.S. for the first time this week uh, for 2020 will be followed by Ashley Bond, who had that great run in the Nations Cup here 12 months ago. Five-star winner and runner-up in the Longines Global Champions Tour Super Grand Prix, Dara Kenny, goes middle of the order. Jordan Coyle and Picador follow him soon after. U.S. Pan American Games medalist Eve Jobs will follow our host, Charlie Jacobs, into the ring. McLean Ward, Double H Azure, number 28. Keep an eye on that one, of course. Rowan Willis and Blue Movie show in this competition this afternoon, looking for his place on Sunday. Rowan, who's based here in Florida, but often rides up at the Ocala circuit, comes down here this weekend for World Cup action. Billy Toomey rides here in Florida this spring as well. He's got Kimba Flamenco. Young Zoe Conte of Belgium riding here for the third year in a row. Martin Fuchs, the current world number one, will follow last year's winner Alex Granato and Carl Chen W. Andy Coker and Country Boy, number 47 on the list. Daniel Coyle's a former winner here at uh, the Palm Beach Master. He rides Legacy, followed by Skyler Riley, Robin de Pontul, Jenny McAllister with the Swedish bred Escada VS. Kian O'Connor, Voldeca de Cap, will be followed into the ring by Carl Cook, who leads the Western standings here in North America. So that's how we get there. 60 will jump over Alan Wade's first round track. Coming back for a jump off then. The best 40 athletes on the ranking will be eligible to show in Sunday's World Cup qualifier, part of the Longines FEI Jumping World Cup North American League. So just a few minutes away from the start of competition. The riders have had a little bit of time to uh, walk the course here in this grass arena. Actually, uh, interesting weather patterns coming in here to South Florida as well, meaning that we're gonna, actually going to be moving tomorrow's jump-off class out into the sand school here at Deer Ridge as well. Another beautiful arena just behind our double-decker VIP. So we'll bring you that competition tomorrow from there. And uh, also this competition named for a great friend and supporter of the shows here at the Palm Beach Masters and a true fan of show jumping for Candy Tribble. So this is the Candy Tribble qualifier for the Longines FEI World Cup jumping of Wellington, Florida. That World Cup class comes Sunday afternoon. But today they have to negotiate a uh, course of 13 fences. Sixteen jumping efforts. He has three doubles on the course. And Rodrigo Pessoa, as we mentioned, is going to start the proceedings for us. Rodrigo rides Quality FZ, a horse that's gone well for him here in North America and in Europe. Top 10 in the five-star Grand Prix at Dinar in France towards the tail end of last summer. Rodrigo, individual Olympic medalist, six-time Olympian, three times the World Cup winner. World champion he has been as well back in Rome in 98. So just finished his stint as team manager, chef to keep for Ireland. 
that culminated in them winning the Longines FEI Jumping Nations Cup finals in Barcelona and taking their Olympic qualification for Tokyo this year. So quality right through the field. Whoever was going to go first, I think, was going to give us a good show. But uh, in this instance, the riders will be pinned wherever they can, watching live or on a screen, to see how he takes on this course. Rides up that distance from two to three well. And then a dog leg up to four. They've got a rollback turn here from number five, pushing down to the first of the doubles at 6AB. That little bridge. He has a rail over it this year as it's been built as a wall before and it's really seen some horses back right off. Rodrigo's horse just rolled a little bit free down there through the double and lightly rolled the rail out of the second part, the Longines vertical. Alan Wade has a lot to play with here at uh, metre 55. See exactly what Rodriguez can do. Jump number seven there, the Lunar New Year. He was coming back to the Palm Beach Masters with the water tray underneath. Not content about something in the ring. So Rodrigo's going to pick up the course again. There's an aspect of the arena that he wasn't content with. It's been corrected, I think, as we just saw that chain being put back up across the uh, equipment entrance to the ring. That might have been the issue. Rodrigo through the Bruins double. It sat there quite consistently on Allen's courses in front of the VIP. It's been getting a result in every direction and in every iteration so far. Number 11 is a very, very big oxer then down to 12. And then a left-hand bending line to the last, this oxer. So just that one down, four faults for Rodrigo Pessoa and quality FZ. Teddy Vlock is going to take up the challenge now. Teddy with Volne de Bordeville by winning mood. Israeli rider qualified through to the Longines Global Champions to a Grand Prix of New York. is one of the best 35 athletes at that Governor's Island show. Jumped the World Cup qualifier with us on the North American League at the National Horse Show. Teddy riding for Israel for a few seasons now, having shown internationally for the United States before that, including through the uh, Global Champions Tour back in 2017. So off the roll back over the little viaduct wall. Cleaner jump through that double. This is lurking there, waiting that light plank on top. That's exactly, unfortunately, what happens to Teddy Vlock. The lightest of touches and see that plank coming down. To be honest, he did give it quite a hard rub. Double of doubles up here on the long side as well from the net jets fence. 
Six strides up. He has the two verticals down, the vertical out of number nine, the vertical into number ten. Takes the Turkish Airlines fence as well. And clear the last. So 78, 25 and 20 jumping fourths. 80 seconds is down as the time allowed at the moment for our competitors in this candy triple qualify. So uh, a total of 20 and 78, 25 there for Teddy Vlock. Alexandra Thornton goes next, the British rider with Cornetta K. They had a podium in the Salzburg Grand Prix just before Christmas in Austria. Alexandra's been on some big Nations Cup teams for Great Britain, Rotterdam and Dublin on the Div 1 tour in Europe. A former North American Young Rider Championships contender riding for the UK since uh, 2011. Cornet OK has been with her and delivering good results for a couple of years now. Just ended up having to really shape a line there from two to three over the toll bridge and on to the Deer Ridge Farms honey fence, having jumped number two, that vertical, a little bit from left of centre to land right of centre. They made the whole line a little bit more difficult for themselves. It was probably entirely necessary because they then had to swing up on a right-hand dogleg to the Canadian Pacific. Still clear at the moment, though. Clear that Chinese fence at the bottom of the ring. Number seven. Could this be our first clear round? It's really settled into it. I mean, Rodrigo Pessoa, quality FZ, was just quite unlucky with their four faults coming through the Longines double. Ah, and unlucky here. They got a little bit close in, ended up taking the front rail out of the Bruins. Oxer on the way out of the double at number 10. And time faults as well, 80 seconds of the time allowed. Alexander has just been a little bit too steady across the ground. 85-7-0, four for jumping, two for time, total of six. Now, remember, 20 athletes showing in this competition will not qualify through to Sunday. So they really do need to think about minimizing their faults as much as possible, with Sunday being the ultimate aim. But in this competition as well, you know, meter 55, world ranking class, 72, nearly $73,000 in the prize fund. It's a class worth taking on its own merits as well. Karen Polly. Karen with Kino. Horse that's been at the top of her string for a few years now. Karen was our runner-up at the National Horse Show World Cup qualifier in Kentucky. Represented Japan at last summer's Longines FEI Jumping Nations Cup finals in Barcelona. And uh, riding for Japan since 2014. Before that, she was a team silver and team bronze medalist at the North American Youth Championships. A little bit of exuberance from Kino there, having jumped the first of these big fences here in the Candy Triple Qualifier. You can see that vertical there. There's only those maybe two more holes to go to take it up from meter 55 to the full potential meter 60 that we jump on Sunday. Kino's another horse to just take a little bit of a look at that wall. Actually, thinking year on year, Alan has nearly always used that wall up at that end of the ring. And what he's looking for them to do in this situation is to have that little bit of a look of it and then struggle with the distance down to the Longines double. But Karen Pollet, who has been a five-star Grand Prix winner in her career, answers that particular question.
coming around towards home. Still three fences to go. It's a long track here as a gateway to the World Cup qualifier. Clear the Turkish Airlines fence. Turkish Airlines, our big sponsor tomorrow. So it is clear for jumping, but it's time. Clear with two for time. So that is our leading score at the moment for Karen Pole. So, youngest ever World Cup champion, Mario Delorier. Ura still a rock by Capital out of a quick star mare. It's spread by uh, Top Stallions in Valkenswald, the Netherlands. Owned by Aram Amku. Amku. Amp. Ampergumian. I knew what I wanted to say, I just couldn't say it. And Mario himself, Mario. Won the Hampton Classic last year in September ridden at and won some of the biggest and best shows in the world. Down his tail end of the ring, still on the clear. Hard shift across there as he jumped that top rail. You could see it move, that light plank, right to the edge of its flat cup. And the luck is against him then, unfortunately, over the uh, Palm Beach Masters with those horizontal strike poles. There's a few quite interesting pole choices in here. Those, those net jets poles, we see them a lot. Net jets are great supporters of our sport. But those single-color gray poles as well can can sometimes be as difficult for the horses to just pick up and read as, as those horizontal stripe poles that we're using down at the Palm Beach Masters fence. Has the Turkish Airlines away as well for a total of eight and really has to push on towards the last and that puts him into time. It is eight for jumping, one for time for Mario Deloria and Uris del Rock. So that puts Mario into fourth position, Alexandra Thornton in third, Rodrigo Pessoa in second, and Karen Pole, our leader, but with two faults. Another for Canada, Ben Aslan. Ben, who was with us in Europe for a couple of years, based at uh, Ludgebirbaum Stables in Germany. Rides attaché stables, Louis Q by Louis Dam out of a Canon mare. Ben is a former North American junior individual and team gold medalist. Represented Canada at the Nations Cup finals back in 2014. And a couple of seasons ago here in Florida, he was uh, a top five finisher in the season finale five-star Grand Prix. Another horse to just back off that little wall at the top of the course a little bit. Sails through the Longines double, but gets caught out then at the Chinese fence at the very end with the yellow plank. So carrying four, Karen Pole remains our leader as we still search for our first clear round. Just sits up, doesn't want to carry forward the error through the Bruins, which he doesn't. Nice correction there after a bad jump into that line. Into time as well, 80.80 .80 for Ben Aslin, so 12 jumping faults, one for time. 
total of 13. That goes into fifth behind Mario Deloria. Teddy Vlock moves down the order again. Karen Pole on two faults is our best in the clubhouse so far. Olympic gold medalist, world champion with the U.S. team in 2018. Representing the USA at this summer's, or last summer's, Nations Cup finals as well. Laura Kraut, Laura with St. Bride's Farm's Confu by Contact Me, St. Bride's Farm of Virginia. Been great supporters to Laura over the last few years and also supporters of the Upperville Horse Show. Laura, and a good one so far, comes through the Bruins here at the top of the ring with Kon Fu. It's just a couple of fences to go. Could be in a little bit of trouble time-wise, though. Over the last, watching the time all the way, 79-74, just inside. Laura Craig gives us clear round number one. That's a great one to have in any potential jump-off. And they will come back in the order in which they qualify as well. So Laura will trailblaze our jump off when it comes here later on in this Candy Tribble qualifier. Lauren Huff with Canamera is our next to go. Kathleen K. Mines horse by Clarimo. This is Lauren's first World Cup show in North America this season. Road World Cup at Stuttgart in Germany in November. Lauren has been a U.S. Olympian. She's been a Pan American Games team gold medalist. She was the individual bronze medalist at the 2015 Toronto Pan Ams. So we just see Lauren here moving along quite promptly as well. Oh, has to go back to a little bit of hunting experience, I'd say. The way she rode that wall. Down to the end of the ring, just held Canamera a little bit off that yellow fence. At the end of the line, still on a clear at the moment. As I was saying, she's been quite prompt and efficient all the way around this course because that 80 seconds time allowed has reared its head a few times. Just catches the back rail there coming down out of the Bruins. It's unfortunate because they lost a little bit of straightness through the net jets. And then Lauren Hoff, she made doubly sure of staying exactly on her line up to and through the Bruins double. It's going to have the uh, Turkish Airlines fence down and the back rail off the last. So it's 12 for jumping, one for time. Lauren Huff's round, unfortunately, coming apart in the latter part of the course. Goes seventh behind Ben Aslid. Same score of 13 there, classified according to time. And she was about uh, one and a half seconds slower.
Next to go, Paracelin with Willow Grace Farms Cassandra by Carasini. Paris had a recent top five finish in the indoor Grand Prix at the Lyon World Cup show. Been a Nations Cup rider to the very, very top level for the United States and was fourth in the World Cup qualifier here back in 2016. Which I think was the very first running of the uh, World Cup qualifier here at Deerage Farms. Kent Farrington and Iseko were the winners. So carrying the four as they head on to the final line. This is still just Laura Kreit as our clear round. Karen Polly sits behind. She was clear, but with two time faults. And the 80 seconds time allowed is neat. 79.34 with four faults for Paracelin and Cassandra. So that goes into fourth place. So that plank down at the very end of the line, 5, 6, A, B, 7. It'll come back in the jump off, but actually going to be made out of different materials, including changing the plank top rail. But at the moment, it is uh, becoming one of our most influential fences. Well, here's a rider we see for the first time this weekend, Margie Goldstein Engel, Margie with Royce. Margie, who's uh, lying well up on the standings of World Cup this season. She won the five-star Grand Prix at Saugatees in September. She's a winner in recent times of the season finale, half-million-dollar Grand Prix here in Wellington, Florida as well. 17-time World Cup finalist, 10-time U.S. Rider of the Year. Can Margie join Laura Kreit on the zero penalties and give us a jump off here in the Candy Triple Qualifier? Royce, big old horse. I mean, notwithstanding that Margie is not the tallest lady in the world, but Royce and Dikas, the top horse, are absolutely enormous. Sometimes he just looks like he's stepping over meter 60 courses. Gives that a little bit of a rub. It might just clean up his jump for this plank, which would be to the good. And clear the Boston Bruins double then in front of the VIP coming on towards home. She's got about 15 seconds to get there. Margie keeps going. Two very good jump off riders if it ends up being them first to go. Laura Kreit and Margie Goldstein Engel. Margie spots the last and home she comes. 78 45 and she is clear. She's clear on number two and we definitely have a jump off on our hands. We've seen 10 riders and two have jumped clear. Laura Kreit, Margie Goldstein Engel going head to head here later on this evening. Who will join them? <laughs> Carlos Aguero, H5, just the music. Our representative of Mexico in our starting field. Carlos Hank. We saw jumping alongside Lauren Huff at that World Cup qualifier at Stuttgart. In the 2019 season, represented Mexico in Nations Cup action in Canada and at Dublin. And 
And still one of the U25 riders in the world, just 19 years old, a team bronze medalist with the Mexicans at the 2018 North American Youth Championships. Ah, oh, it was just going so well, but just carried a little bit too much pace through that second double along the long side. They're just having to be so conscious of this time allowed because a moment's inattention and they'll find themselves outside it, as indeed does Carlos Hanquero. Four for jumping, one for time with 80.48 seconds on the clock. So sixth position just behind Paracelan and Rodrigo Pessoa are two four faulters. Karen Polly still in third with two time faults. Largie Goldston Engel and Laura Cry, the pair at the moment duking it out in the jump off to come. Vanessa Mannix and Valentino Delt. Vanessa rides on the Western League of North American show jumping and has 28 points for eighth position. For Canada's and Mexico's riders, it is about points scored in either side of the country. So seven East Coast U.S. riders go through, three West Coast U.S. riders go through. The Canadian and Mexican riders with the most points, regardless of sub-league, are qualified and also when we've got the likes of uh, Irish riders and other South American riders uh, inside the leagues and inside those top rankings they can qualify through as extra athletes provided they outscore the lowest qualified US athlete so Vanessa Mannix unfortunately very uncomfortable jump there over the one at the top of the ring as well the CP at number four but took a rail at number three the Deer Ridge Honey Fence Vanessa has been a Canadian Nations Cup rider. Jumped the five-star tour at Dublin a few years ago when she was uh, at university in Trinity College, Dublin. Eight for jumping, one for time so far. That time keeps ticking, unfortunately, for Vanessa Mannix. And it's three in all for time. Vanessa Mannix on a total of 11 with Valentino Delt. That goes down into ninth position. Remember, 20 athletes will not qualify through from this class to the World Cup on Sunday. And 11 faults is looking like quite a big score at the moment. Down ninth of the 12 we've seen so far.
So next to go, Andrew Ramsey. Andrew, who's sixth on the uh, league here in North America at the moment with 30 points, including a runner-up spot in Las Vegas, a qualifier he has been a winner of previously in his career. Grand Prix winner in Ohio, at the Split Rock Jumping Tour in Columbus, Ohio. And also he's been Grand Prix winner in Europe. And he's another one to just take that Deerage Farms honey fence down. So very quickly totting up to eight faults. And we'll make it 12 as he takes away the second part of the Longines double. Clean jump over the plank at the bottom of the ring. Just settled down into this round of jumping now a little bit better. Andrew Ramsey with the syndicate owned Stranger by Staccato. So Andrew and Stranger inside the time, but with the three down, it's 12 jumping force, but certainly a round that got better the longer it went on for Andrew. Well, a rider jumping here in North America for the first time for 2020 this week. Yuri Mansour, Yuri with QH, Alphonse Santo Antonio. Yuri showed in several Longines Global Champions to a Grand Prix this season. Twice a World Cup finalist, World Championships level rider for Brazil and winner of the prestigious King George, the five-star Grand Prix at the Nations Cup show at the Longines Royal International at Hickstead in Great Britain. So Yuri clear at the moment as he turns back to the Palm Beach Masters fence. He just need also to be conscious all the time of that 80 seconds time allowed. Ah. So those horizontal strike rails go off the front of the Oxer. It's difficult because the riders naturally want to go deep into that corner to try and really set up for the Palm Beach Masters fence with the water tray underneath. The time allowed is forcing to that just cut in a little bit on the corner. And Yuri has faults and time, four for jumping, and uh, it is one for time. Total of five in 83.95. Yuri Mansour goes seventh on our ranking so far for Brazil. Rodrigo Pessoa in fourth on four faults. Karen Pole in third on two faults. And two for the jump off so far. Margie Goldstein Engel and Laura Kraut. Ashley Bond. Ashley with uh, her own and Little Valley Farms. Donatello by Di Raro. Rider who represented US to Nations Cup level before declaring for Israel. Four-time World Cup finalist rode at the World Championships for Israel in 2018. That was the winner of Del Mar on the World Cup circuit this winter. Has had some very good results. 
with Nations Cup team jumping for Israel as well, including here at Deerage Farms last spring in Rome at Piazza di Siena and also at the uh, Olympic qualifier held last summer in Moscow when Israel secured their qualification. Ashley riding at the time alongside Daniel Blumen and Danny G. Volman. Jumps across the stripy pole, still on a clear at the moment and looking like they're fast enough as well, but they carry a good bit of pace up this line. Nicely done. 20 seconds to get home from here to be inside the time. Laura Kraut, Margie Goldstein Engel. Are we about to see Ashley Bond, the native of Los Angeles, California, join them representing Israel in the jump off? Just makes absolutely sure of the last, knowing that she's got a little bit of time in hand. She is comfortably inside, even doing that. Donatello and Ashley Bond are clear round number three, and they'll be back for the jump off. Andrew Wells is our next to go. Andrew with Brindis Boogie Boo by Grand Pilot. Andrew was the runner-up at Washington, top 10 at Tiber. That was with Primo Troy. Was just outside the top five in the Nations Cup Grand Prix here at Deerage Farms 12 months ago. So Andrew and Brindis Boogie Boo turning back to the Palm Beach Masters. Still on the clear, but then they have the rail that will keep them out of the jump off. Rodrigo Pessoa very fast with his full faults in 76-87. Well, ticking over into time as well. 83-86 for Andrew Wells. Puts him into eighth position. Five faults slower than Carlos Heinke on five. Faster than Yuri Mansour on five. They're all still inside the top ten at the moment. As we come up to about a third of the way through the starting draw. Again, we do have a couple of fences probably standing out. Giving us a good few faults. And they both come in quick succession there. The yellow Chinese uh, decorated fence at seven. And the Palm Beach Masters at eight. But we are still seeing plenty of poles right around this course as Brian Mogray comes forward with Major Wager LLC's MTM Vive Le Rev. This has been Brian's go-to horse for World Cup this year. They were the winners at the National Horse Show, third in Toronto, sixth at Gold Cup, and seventh in Columbus, Ohio. Brian, who won the first ever World Cup he rode in at Live Oak International in Ocala, Florida in spring of 2019. Is the leader of the standings. Brian is an international. Class winner at the Pennsylvania National and at the Washington International Horse Show 
in the autumn of 2018. Whilst he was still riding in the likes of those equitation finals, he was the reserve McClay champion in 2018. This year, though, has been incredible for him with those you know, two World Cup wins in the last 12 months. A top 10 in a five-star Grand Prix at Spruce Meadows in Canada. A podium in a five-star Grand Prix at Saugatis, part of the winning U.S. team in the uh, Youth Nations Cup finals at Centaur in the autumn. He's the number four ranked under 25 rider in the world. And that puts him just behind the likes of Jos Valoy. And Bertram Allen. Ah, just into time. 80.70. Brian Mogre and MTM Vive Le Rev are clear for jumping one for time. You'd have to imagine that is still going to keep him in the top 40 athletes ranked in this class. So he'll be comfortably through to Sunday's World Cup qualifier where he'll look to maybe pick up even more points. As it is at the moment, he is assured of a place in his first ever Longines FEI jumping World Cup finals in Las Vegas in April. Brian Mogre goes fourth behind our three clears who will come back to decide things in a jump off. Well, next to go for Great Britain, Emily Moffat, and winning good. And that is exactly what she's been doing with her other horse, Tipsy de Terrell. She's taken two speed class wins here this weekend. Winning good, former winner of the uh, Launching Global Champions Tour Grand Prix of Saint-Tropez with Ben Mayer. Emily, who was on the winning Nations Cup team in Dublin this year, also part of the British panel for the... Longines FEI jumping Nations Cup finals in Barcelona. That line is very, very difficult. They've really got to read and react right to the viaduct wall at the top to get away with the Longines double, which follows. That gives four faults to Emily Moffat quite early in her round, leaving us still with just three for the jump off. Clear. Oh, just bounced that right out of its cups on the back of the Bruins fence. Stays in place, though, still on the four. At the end of the line, double of doubles. Just holds the horse a little bit off the Turkish Airlines and comes around towards home. Time should be okay. Yep, just the four faults for Emily Moffat and winning good. And that will go into eighth position as things currently stand. Three clears, Brian Mogre on a single time fault, Karen Pole on two. Rodrigo Pessoa leads the charge of four falters. Paracelan on four, Emily Moffat on four. Five faults then for Carlos Hank, Andrew Wells, Yuri Mansour. Six for Alexandra Thornton, nine for Mario Delorier. So we have about half a dozen World Cup champions in the history of that series with us. And here is one of them, Bert Manley, Vic de Serissier. for the Grant Road partners.
Bert has just nine points on the league at the moment. He's been in winning ways on this North American League over the last few seasons, winner in recent years of Washington. He went to the finals last year off the back of a third-place finish here at the Palm Beach Masters. Bert Manley won his World Cup actually in Las Vegas back in 2007. Looks like that Turkish Airlines might have gone. They're still sitting on four, mind you. Comes home inside the time. So four faults in a good time. 77 seconds, just a little bit slower than Rodrigo's interrupted time of 76. So that goes into seventh place. Adrian Sternlicht with the Lupicor son, Benny's legacy. Starlight Farms in the ownership of this one. Twice a World Cup winner this season, and she very sensibly, having shown here several times in the past, goes up and has a look at that stone wall. Adrian jumped well both in World Cup and Nations Cup week here 12 months ago. Member of the gold medal winning team at the World Games. And this new ride into her stables in recent months took two wins in quick succession in world cup thermal in california and las vegas in nevada Again, you can just see how the riders are turning on the pace a little bit. Adrian goes out quite wide to this jump, and we said earlier on that that's a tactic they want to use. And she tried to just build up a little bit of a comfort zone time-wise from the pace she'd used early on with Benny's legacy to make it possible for her to do that. This should be okay. About 60 seconds coming out of the Bruins. 20 to get home is, uh, is doable. Just lining up on the last. Adrian Sterner could make it three out of four for the United States of America in the jump off. 79.33 on the clock. She pushed it nearly all the way to the time allowed of 80 seconds. But it's good. It's four. Clears coming back for the jump off now as Adrian Sternlicht delivers the answers to Alan Wade's questions around this Palm Beach Masters track. This Candy Tribble named qualifier, qualifier for the Sunday World Cup class here at Deerage. Well, the runner-up in the Longines Global Champions Tour Super Grand Prix in Prague. Last winter, Dara Kenny, with his own and Ann Thompson's classic dream here at Deerage. Dara, who was the runner-up in Verona in Europe, for jumping at the likes of Washington and the National Horse Show with us here at the North American League. He was on that winning Irish team in the Nations Cup Finals in Barcelona. Adrian Sternlich rode exactly the round that they'd all like to ride. She had the pace 
to give her the opportunity to go out wide on some of the turns where she really wanted to prepare the horse. And I think that's going to become the template for some of these top riders. I mean, here we're looking at one of our several riders from inside the world's top 10 to be with us at the Palm Beach Masters. Dara ranked eighth at the moment in the world. And barely a week seems to go by without him winning another world ranking class. And look at the judgment here, 77.58. There was really no question of being caught up in an 80 seconds time allowed. Very, very nicely done. Put it in context, it is not only our fastest clear round as clear round number five, it's the fastest anyone has gone around this track. Just a little bit uh, more than Bert Mandy. Rodrigo Pessoa is on 76.87, it must be said, but that was with an interrupted time. Classic dream, Dara Kenny become clear round number five, giving us two in a row following Adrian Sternlicht into the jump off starting list. And we go on to Kerry McCahill Kerry with Kerry Ann LLC's Vats and Sitta for the United States of America. Kerry, who has trained with Dara Kenny, recently bought Aurelia from Kevin Stoud as well. Kerry jumped through the Global Champions League series at those five-star shows around the world in 2017 and has jumped the World Cup this winter at both Thermal and Las Vegas. Those two events won by Adrian Sternlicht and Benny's Legacy, who we saw a few moments ago. Pushes nicely up towards that Deerage Farms honey fence and over the CP Railroad. And they've got this long sweeping turn here. I know she's concentrating on but you just worry whether she's carrying enough pace around that long turn. Or suddenly looks down at that wall. They end up with an uncomfortable jump over it. So they really need to ask and squeeze up then to that double. And Kerry McHale, unfortunately, has the rail down the plank off the top of the yellow fence at the end of the line. Four faults as they clear the uh, double a double. Those four faults coming in earlier on. Kerry McCahill could be in a little bit of trouble time wise here as well. 80 seconds the time allowed. Just starts to tick over into time penalties now. Clears over the last. The green is the new blue fence. The uh, horse show sustainability program. Kerry McCahill and Vats and Sitter are going to be on four for jumping and two for time. Total of six. Same score as Alexandra Thornton, but they are a little bit faster, so they go into 15th spot. Jordan Coyle is our next to go. Jordan, World Cup qualifier 12 months ago at Leon in Mexico. He's on the Irish Nations Cup team for uh, Michael Blake at Langley, British Columbia in summer of 2019 as well. And he's been a podium finisher in the past in the two-star Grand Prix at the Longines Global Champions Tour leg of Mexico City at the Campo Marte. Jordan over the railroad fence at the top of the ring. CP have been partners here with the Palm Beach Masters almost since day one. A lot of sponsors signing on year after year here at this magnificent venue in this series, which grows year on year as well, moving up to three open jumper shows for 2020, including North America's newest five star, the Palm Beach Open in March. Now, Jordan goes out wide, but he wasn't carrying a lot of foot speed on his way back to the Palm Beach Masters fence. So we want to see him coming out of the end of the double a double with 60 seconds or so left on his clock. And I think he's just going to be a shade down on that. 
ends up, you saw him wavering a little bit on his approach up to the Bruins as well. So he has the rail, but it's potentially going to be rail and time. Jordan clear the Turkish Airlines fence. It's just need to be conscious. You know, a third of this field won't get to come back for the World Cup. We have 60 to show, and we have 40 places available on Sunday. Jordan Coyle with four for jumping and one for time goes into 13th at the moment. So following Jordan Coyle into the ring, RMF Zesley and Jessica Springsteen. Jessica rode this horse to her first ever five-star Grand Prix and launching global champions to a Grand Prix victory in Saint-Tropez in the south of France. Owned by Frank and Monica McCourt's Rushy Marsh Farm operation. Jess, who also won the Indoor Grand Prix at Stockholm in the Friends Arena in uh, November, early December. Has won the Saugatees Million on a couple of occasions in upstate New York. And started her career in fine style with a win in the McClay Medal Finals at the National Horse Show. So she does just rattle that plank. We haven't seen it go for a wee while, but it's certainly just waiting there, lurking. I saw Jessica walking the course with Helena Stormans, who will have given her great coaching for this round, and she rode a great approach around to that Palm Beach Masters. Again, exactly like you know the template set by Adrian Sternlicht, wide but fast. Jessie is... There or thereabouts on the time. She can't afford to take too many corrections and pulls on the way home. Stretches out over the last, and it's 80.08. She's just gone. Jessica Springsteen is one for time. A little bit faster than Brian Mogre. Takes over sixth position, but eight hundredths of a second away from a place in the jump off. I would say that we are happy enough that she will be back on Sunday for the World Cup qualifier. Sixth at the moment, after we've seen uh, 24 showing in this Candy Triple pre-qualifier. But uh, Jessica so nearly had the opportunity to win this competition in her grasp. Charlie Jacobs with CMJ Sport Horses Cassinia S by Carino. Charlie, who was just outside the top 10 here 12 months ago at his family farm here in Wellington, Florida. Charlie's parents are our host and his brother and sister, together with Charlie, are the organizing committee of this show. Charlie's come here with a couple of tactics over the years. It was one year he didn't ride here at all. He ended up making big efforts to go out to the West Coast to try and get his qualification. But last year, this year, showing here at home, 
with all those distractions, I can entirely understand, you know, the policy he took a couple of years ago, but he takes eight faults onto the final line. He's time-wise, he's okay. Let's see where eight faults would go. If he can come home on eight exactly, he would go 19th so far. But it is 12, 12 in 78-67 for Charlie Jacobs. And that could just be a little bit too much. Same score as Andrew Ramsey, 21st position at the moment. You know, at the moment, there are four riders ranked behind Charlie. He needs there to be 20 riders ranked worse than his 12 faults in 78-67 to make it into Sunday's class. Yves Jobs, venu de fils de Ezel. I president. U.S. rider. Took a medal with the U.S. team at the Pan American Games last summer in Lima, Peru. Went to her first World Cup finals in the spring of 2019 as well. After a great World Cup season. And had a very good Palm Beach Masters with us last year. Fifth in the Grand Prix qualifier at Nations Cup Week and third in tomorrow's class, the Turkish Airlines jump off here 12 months ago. So through the first of the doubles, the net chat setting up on the Boston Bruins. Now the time might be a touch needle. You need to carry on a forward pace all the way home here. They can't afford to set up too much for either this Turkish Airlines maximum height vertical or the last. A great round of jumping and comfortably inside the time. Her great run of success at this Palm Beach Masters show continues. Venue de Feast to Ezel and Eve Jobs go through to our jump off as one of just six qualified so far. Canadian Olympian Amy Miller. Amy with Truman. Amy made her first Olympic appearance at Rio in 2016, following, of course, in the footsteps of father, Captain Canada, Ian Miller. Had some good results with this horse, including third in the Grand Prix qualifier at the Hampton Classic last September. Truman by the uh, French sire, Milord Cartago. That was a shame. Difficult to tell from that angle exactly what she might have done wrong. Seemed to pop up there on the six strides very nicely. And unfortunately, she had the rail going into the Bruins double. Amy sits up for the next big vertical on course. The Turkish Airlines on the way home. And adjusts a little bit coming into the last. It's okay, though, time-wise. She's another one on four faults. And that goes 12th as things currently stand. And uh, she was the 27th to show, so she's definitely in the top 50% so far but only a shade over one in five jumping clear so far in this uh, Palm Beach Masters Candy Tribble qualifier
Well, next to go, McLean Ward. McLean with Double H Farm and his own Double H Azure. Annie. McLean, the World Cup champion with Azure back in Omaha. There's very little in McLean's career that he hasn't won. Actually, the World Cup is eluding him a little bit this year. He only has eight points on the league so far. But a win here with the couple of opportunities left, including here on the East Coast, Live Oak International in Ocala, Florida in March. McLean's window to qualify is far from closed. And he's absolutely a rider who could come out here and deliver the win on Sunday afternoon and take 20 points. But he's not going to be amongst the jump off qualifiers today. If he can hold it to four and inside the time, we should still be uh, pretty assured of seeing this world-class combination here on Sunday afternoon in the World Cup qualifier. And how they qualify really doesn't matter. They start from scratch. And McLean's world ranking of number 13 at the moment, he's only just outside the top 10 for the first time in a long while. We'll put him towards the end of the draw as well. The draw for Sunday will be done in two groups based on world ranking points. McLean and Double H Azure. Four for jumping and one for time. I hope that time penalty isn't what keeps him away. He's 17th at the moment. Which means that there are, there are already 11 ranked behind him. So on course now with another one of the H5 horses, H5 Quintal, Eduardo de Menezes for Brazil. Eduardo, runner-up in recent years in the World Cup qualifier at Del Mar. Gold medalist with the Brazilians at the Pan American Games in 2019. He was also a Rio Olympian. just rattles that net jets fence just outside 80.17 another one to just be denied Eduardo de Menezes and H5 Quintal Clear for jumping, one for time. There's three now on that standard. Jessica Springsteen, Eduardo de Menezes, and Brian Mogray holding seventh, eighth, and ninth. So 29 of the 60 have been seen here. We've got Laura Kraut, Margie Golston Engel, Ashley Bond, Adrian Sternlicht, Dara Kenny, and Eve Jobs qualified through for the jump off at the moment. Six of them fitting nicely there on a single sheet of graphics. 
with Jess Springsteen, Eduardo de Menezes and Brian Mogro just missing out on single time for each. Who will join those six for the jump off in the $72,900 Candy Triple Qualifier? The pre-qualifier class to select the 40 who will show in the World Cup here on Sunday from the Palm Beach Masters in Wellington, Florida. Don't go too far away. We'll be back with the second half of the initial round of jumping in just a few moments' time.
So welcome back to Deerage here in South Florida for the Palm Beach Masters. We are halfway through the first round of jumping in the Candy Triple Qualifier that will set up our 40-strong field for the World Cup here on Sunday. We have uh, six clears. Laura Kraut, Margie Goldstengel, Ashley Bond, Adrian Sternlicht, Derek Kenny, Eve Jobs coming back for the jump off. A couple very unlucky to miss out with a single time fault as well. 80 seconds the time allowed, and that's rearing its head a couple of times. Lily Keenan and Skyhorse get us back into the action. Lily, who trains now with McLean Ward after a long time with Keen O'Connor. Lily and Skyhorse picked up World Cup points at Columbus, Ohio last October. Top 10 in the uh, Five Star Grand Prix in October as well. Well, an early rail on that first related distance up from the uh, suspension bridge or the swing bridge to the Deer Ridge Honey Farm. It's Lily Keenan on the four faults. Rodrigo Pessoa is our fastest four faulter currently in 11th. So Lily comes down this final line, the Turkish Airlines, and then a slight dog leg to the green is the new blue fence. 80 seconds time allowed. She's going to be just over that as well. Four for jumping, one for time. Yet another one on a total of five faults. Lily Keenan goes at 17th on that total. Now Lily is the 30th we see. We're going to start to uh, get an impression of those who are for sure not qualifying for Sunday based on the result. There might be one or two substitutions after the competition as well for people who don't wish to go on and take up their place in the World Cup. But in, uh, in essence, it is the best 40 in the rankings of this competition.
Rowan Willis and Blue Movie next to go. Rowan, who was just outside the individual top ten at the World Games in 2018. Winner of the Nations Cup Grand Prix in Ocala in 2018 as well, when he first came here to the United States of America. So Rowan spends most of his time based at and showing in Ocala. Comes down here to Wellington for a couple of key weeks, including this World Cup week. Rowan is fifth with 34 points on the league, so looking to go forward as one of those extra athletes. Had two fifth place finishes with Diablo, National Horse Show, and uh, Toronto. Oh, to just rattle those planks down at the end of the line. Saying the faults well spread out, but in terms of time, they need to be finishing this line, the double of doubles, jumping out at the top of the line at 60 seconds or under to be comfortably getting home. And that still means that they have to ride positively all the way home. They can't be checking and adjusting. And Blue Movie and Rowan Willis could be in trouble. 61 seconds. He has to use the experience he's built up with this horse at the top level to carry him free and forward all the way home. And he's not just getting that. He's having to adjust into the last. He is clear, but he's out of time. 80.21. So Rowan Willis is another one to find himself just outside the jump off on a single time fault. Again, it would be enough to carry him through to the World Cup. So that's job done in that perspective. But ninth position for Rowan as a result of just having to correct, just regain balance a little bit, it looked like, on the turn, coming round to that last on course. Paul O'Shea, another member of that Irish team that won the Longines FEI Jumping Nations Cup finals in Barcelona last year. That was with Scarra Glenn's Machu Picchu, a horse that jumped a lot of clears in Nations Cup action across Europe for Paul and for Ireland last year. Here he is with Scarra Glenn's Chancelloress by Chaco Blue. Paul, who won the Nations Cup Grand Prix here with Emerald at Deerridge 2019. So early rail, unfortunately, for Paul. At the moment, four faults. Probably we're going to see them all back. It's the fives and the eights that need to start to worry at this stage. It's going to be quite a low-scoring qualification, interestingly, although we aren't having that many clears. Still just six for the jump-off. There's so many on uh, one and a single rider on two time faults that they're occupying a lot of the qualifying spots. Eleven of the qualifying spots going to riders who have achieved a clear, albeit with, in some cases, time penalties over this track. So eight plus one for Paul O'Shea and Scarred Lens Chancellor S. So nine in all. 32nd spot. True 25th spot, I think, actually. For Paul at the moment on that nine fault total. Well, now Amanda Derbyshire. Amanda's not having a bad show at all with a couple in the placings already. Amanda with Cornwall BH on this occasion, jointly owned by herself and Gotchman Sport Horses, but it grinds to a halt here on the way around to the 
Tolbridge. By turning that circle, they've unfortunately incurred four early penalties. And look at the horse just drifting across the face of that honey fence before Amanda was able to just really get the leg on and say, I'm not having this. Come on. Cornwall's a very experienced horse in the Gotchman stables. Again, just almost throws in the towel in front of that little brown wall. And uh, having had a difficult uh, first part of the course, Amanda Derbyshire is going to elect to retire as she rides that roll back to the Palm Beach Masters fence. Very, very uncharacteristic, and unfortunately it's going to put her right down the bottom of the order. And uh, we're unlikely, therefore, to see Amanda Derbyshire coming back for the uh, qualifier on Sunday. So another one of our finals winners, Rich Feller. Rich with uh, Kimberly Bruce's Ninu by Nintendo. Rich, who won that uh, World Cup finals in Sotogenbosch back in 2012 with the Irish sport horse Flexible. It's one of Flexible's eight appearances at the World Cup Finals. Rich was a London Olympian with Flexible as well. Got a few points on the World Cup over the winter with finishes just outside the te top ten in both Thermal and Las Vegas. Those two legs that were won by Adrian Sternlicht and Benny's Legacy, a combination that are qualified for our jump off as one of the six clears so far in this Candy Triple qualifier. So Rich still on the clear at the moment. He jumps the Palm Beach Masters fence. Sets up Ninu for the double of doubles. He's jumping well. <laughs> Commentator's curse, unfortunately. Both parts of the Bruins down. Uh, but what I was going to say was I think he's just a little bit down on the time to get home inside 80 seconds. Uh, Rich fellas and Ninu. Have the last as well, total of 12 faults, actually 78-2-0 on the clock. They weren't that bad time-wise, but 12 jumping faults, and that is 28th position at the moment. Well, BZ Madden, the two-time World Cup champion. BZ ranked number seven in the world at the moment with Abigail Wexner's Garant, a horse that as an eight-year-old won the American Gold Cup World Cup qualifier in September last year. But this could be interesting. For all that he was a wunderkind, yesterday BZ had to show him twice just looking for the ride ability, just looking for the horse she had last September. Has she done enough overnight to regain that horse, to jump clear? Because make no bones about it, at this stage, a clear is a guaranteed qualifier for Sunday. BZ, who's second on the standings, is pretty much assured of her place in Las Vegas anyway, having also picked up a top five finish with Garant in Columbus at the Split Rock, jumping to a leg. He won the Spruce Meadows Grand Prix 
in the Masters show last September. It's through the Bruins, 61, 62 seconds there. Again, she needs to be smooth and positive all the way home. Rowan Willis just had to make that adjustment off a similar time at our check fence coming into the last to be caught out by the 80 seconds time allowed. Beasy is oh, ho, ho, just inside. 79.45 for Beasy Madden and Garrant. That's our first clear in quite a while. She becomes clear round number seven. And one of the world's very best now will go seventh of currently seven qualified in the jump off looking for the win in this candy triple class. Well, we're starting to get up towards uh, 42 show. We'll start to see who will be dropping out of contention for Sunday's World Cup qualifier. 36th to show will be Shane Sweetnam. Shane with his own in Spy Coast Farms, Dalen by Larimar. This is another just nine-year-old. Shane, who had a sixth-place finish with the great Chaki Z. In Washington to give him his World Cup points so far this winter. Shane very much in the top 1% of uh, ranked riders in the world. Represented Ireland. Several continental championships, World Cup finals as well before now. He was the runner-up last season in the Longines Global Champions to a Grand Prix of London. Shane unfortunately takes the rail coming out of the net jets fence. He's slow across the ground as well. 63 seconds landing out of the double of doubles over the Bruins. Got home pretty quick, it must be said. Only just over that time, 80.70, but four for jumping, one for time, another one on five, and that's Shane Sweetnam and the young horse, Dalin. Well, next to go, Enrique Gonzalez, the Olympian. For Mexico, ridden three times at World Championships level for Mexico as well, and was on that historic winning Nations Cup team for Mexico in Dublin back in 2018. Enrique with Chacna by Chaco Blue. Hoping to join the seven currently qualified for our jump off here. This qualifier class for the World Cup on Sunday. Rides the first lines again very positively. This is certainly a course, and all of the courses this weekend have rewarded positive riding. But this one more so because 80 seconds. It's a it's a long course clearly with an 80 seconds time allowed, and yet so many people being caught out. Just looking there, four, no less, who jumped clear, but were less than four seconds over the time, picking up a single time fault. So they're all excluded from the jump off, but they came incredibly close to answering the question set by this track. And 
Enrique, unfortunately, it all comes apart from him in the double doubles, carrying eight faults on his way home over the Turkish Airlines. Metre 55 vertical and sets up for the last, and he's going to be outside the time as well. No, eight hundredths inside. My apologies. Eight for jumping for Enrique Gonzalez and Chakna. Georgina Bloomberg, Shamur, is our next to go, 12-year-old by Keitano. This was her World Cup final source in Gothenburg in the spring of 2019. Georgina's second appearance at the prestigious Longines FEI jumping World Cup finals in her career. A career that's seen her win big Grand Prix, including the Central Park Horse Show Grand Prix in New York City. And also being a member of U.S. teams in Nations Cup action and to medal-winning level the podium at the Pan American Games in Toronto in 2015. Well, Georgina, unfortunately, carrying the four. She wants to try and hold it on four to be sure of showing on Sunday. Just looking at the time, this could turn into a five-fault round. We just start to analyze the results here. Our lowest-ranked five-faulter is in 24th position. So there are 14 or so ranked behind QH Alphonse Santo Antonio and Yuri Mansour of Brazil. And this is going to be another five falter as Georgina Bloomberg scores 82 37. She goes onto the leaderboard in front of Yuri and Andrew Wells. 22nd position for Georgina Bloomberg. Kimball Flamenco are next to go with Billy Toomey aboard. Billy, the three-time winner of the Liverpool International Horse Show Grand Prix, including Winter Just Gone. Billy who won the Golden Drum at Basel in the spring of 2019 and has been the winner of the Five Star Nations Cup Grand Prix in Falsterbo. He's also won the King George at Hickstead and the Nations Cup Grand Prix at St. Gallen. Billy was one of two riders to represent Ireland at the London Olympics in 2012. Hoping to join countryman Dara Kenny. In the jump off, Dara gave us our uh, fifth clear round. Seven so far qualified for that jump off. Billy's another one to just rattle that. Light top plank moves it to the edge of the plank, but it's a uh, cup, but it stays there. Unfortunately, the rail going into the Bruins and uh, just needs to be very conscious of the time all the way home as well. Eight faults could easily tear his opportunity to show on Sunday. And 12 faults will almost certainly tear it apart. Billy Toomey and Kimber Flamenco with a total of 12 in 78-53. Just had to take a little bit of a dare at the last, I think, in order to ensure that he was going to be inside the time. At 12 faults, we see Rich Fellas, Charlie Jacobs, Andrew Ramsey, all on those 12 fault totals.
Zoe Conte is our next to go. Zoe, a frequent visitor to us here at the Palm Beach Masters. This is her third year showing here in South Florida. Davidoff de Lassus for the Belgian youth medalist owned by Stefex Stables. You are going to sit at the sire of uh, Davidoff de Lassus. And Zoe, who's shown at the Mechelen World Cup show at the five-star level for the last five seasons in a row, has been uh, challenging on the World Cup in Europe this year, jumped at Lyon and Verona and took a fourth-place finish at La Coruña in Spain. Well, Zoe Conter is going to pick up another one on nine falls. Eight for jumping, one for time, including that last down for Zoe. A nine fault round and 29th position at the moment. Mario Deloria, Paul O'Shea there on the nine, just behind Enrique Gonzalez and Chakna, one of our eight faulters. So Zoe Conte and uh, Davidov de Lassus, they were our 40th competitor. So 20 more to go and 20 who will be hoping to push those high scoring riders like Teddy Vlock on his 20, Lauren Huff on her 13 alongside Ben Aslin on his 13 down and out of the World Cup qualifier on Sunday. Connor Swell, Kostvan Heister. Not only hoping to make it through to Sunday, but hoping to get into the jump off to take a chance of winning this competition. So Connor mops up the first few fences on course, no problem at all. Connor with Kos van Heister was the runner up in Sacramento. Also took points for top ten in Toronto. Was on the Irish team in the Nations Cup at Spruce Meadows last year and a career winner of the World Cup qualifier at Thunderbird in Langley, British Columbia. What's the time going to be? Because he is clear. It's just a question of whether he was going to be inside 80 seconds and he's not. Quarter of a second over. Connor Swell is another one on a single time fault. It'll be fine. That'll put him through to Sunday. But 11th position so far. So, so close to being part of the jump off alongside countryman Dara Kenny. Still seven qualified.
So having seen Georgina Bloomberg a few minutes ago with Shamu, now we have Shamu. Shamu and Sergio Alvarez Moya. Sergio, who was second in Helsinki towards the beginning of the Western European League. So he has 20 points in total on World Cup jumping so far. He will be able to pick up points here on Sunday as well if he qualifies through. Shamu jumps well up. That lifting bridge to Honey Fence and now over the CP Railroad. Far from Sergio's first time here in South Florida either. He's had some very good top-level results here throughout the many shows and tours that make this a real winter destination. Beautiful round of jumping here from Sergio Alvarez Moya, 78-62, comfortably inside the time as well from one of the world's most experienced riders, Sergio Alvarez Moya and Shamu. Give us clear round number eight. Sergio, part of the Spanish team that won the Challenge Cup final at the Longines FEI Jumping Nations Cup finals in Barcelona. Well, the defending Palm Beach Masters champion, Alex Granato, with Carl Chen W. That was on last year's season, but they've had good results together this season, winning in Columbus, Ohio. Alex with Carl Chen by Chaco Blue. Alex went down to Lima last year as part of the U.S. team that won bronze at the Pan American Games. Currently ninth on the West Coast standings with 26 points, so he could do with a fill-up of points this weekend to try and push, push him into contention for a place as a West Coast rider in the finals. Three U.S. riders qualify out of the West Coast. So on the clear at the moment here. Again, just needs to be a little bit conscious of the time all the way home. Alex Granado, Carl Chen W. It's starting to look like coming home. Probably with five or less. Five or less looks like it's going to be the level that goes through. And this is going to be... Ho, 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 into the jump off by five hundredths of a second. Sergio Alvarez Moya is very quickly followed into the jump off by Alex Granado and last year's winner Carl Chen W. So that gives us nine to show over the short course. While wearing the armband as world number one, Martin Fuchs, Martin with the Sinner. Combination that were winners of World Cup action in London Olympia just before Christmas. Martin also won the Lyon World Cup qualifier with Clooney, so he has 44 points in Europe. And would feel himself pretty comfortable 
in terms of qualification through to the World Cup finals in Las Vegas, hoping to improve on his individual podium in the World Cup finals last year behind countryman Steve Gerdat. The sinner by Sanvaro, former ride of uh, Dennis Lynch. Martin ran the horse and won the six bar at Piazza di Siena in Rome in May of 2019. That really helped solidify their partnership and they've had great results on since then. Martin won two Longines Global Champions to a Grand Prix last season and ended up third behind Dara Kenny in the Longines Global Champions to a Super Grand Prix. So again, he has the... Oh, it's gone. Four faults. And he needs to keep the pressure on to keep it just a four and not five with a time fault. So the Sinner and Martin Fuchs are going to be outside the jump off. They do finish on five. We have to wait and see whether that is going to be enough to carry them through. So the 13 falters, Ben Aslin, Lauren Huff, Teddy Vlock on his 20 are confirmed to be out. The lowest ranking five falter at the moment is in 29th position. And we have a little bit more than 10 to go. So it's not necessarily confirmed that even a five falter will make it back to us here. We're hoping not only to be part of the 40 strong field on Sunday but hoping to get into the jump off that might help them win this class today Lauren Tisbo with Tequestrian Farms Mr. Visto Lauren has been several times well placed in major five star Grand Prix here in the United States and a great supporter of the Palm Beach Masters, jumped the Nations Cup and World Cup shows here 12 months ago. But she's going to have that uh, Chinese plank down at the end of the line. Yeah, not a good jump in there. And the horse, so generous, very nearly tried to go, but she wasn't committed to it herself. And then they ended up just going, will we, won't we? And off she pops, unfortunately, for elimination. Lauren Tisbo and Mr. Fisto both up on their feet, which is good to see. But it will, unfortunately, be no further part in this competition. And, and therefore, no qualification for Sunday either for Lauren. Devon Wright is our next to go. Devon with uh, Eddie Blue, Fidel Girocco Blue, superstar horse, won the Gold Cup a few years ago and part of the US team that won the World Championships in 2018. They were also podium finishers in the Paris Longines FEI jumping World Cup fi finals in recent years together as well. Devon Ryan and Eddie Blue next to go for the United States of America. Combination with the runners up in the Hampton Classic last September. And Devon's got 21 or so points on the league so far. He could do with, again, a few more points here. And at Live Oak on the East Coast, 
to try and propel himself to the Vegas finals. So unfortunately, he won't be jumping off today. Devon now determined to hold this to just four faults for Eddie. Time should be okay for him from here. And they leave the last three standing to be on just four faults. Seventy nine forty one and four faults for Devon Ryan and Eddie Blue. Forty one for Devon Ryan and Eddie Blue. Straight on next to Andy Cooker. That will go into twentieth position so far, and there are just twelve or so left, so we can see there that very comfortably Devon Ryan is a qualifier for Sunday's Longines FEI jumping World Cup qualifier of Wellington, Florida. Another World Cup finalist. Also in Paris two seasons ago, Andy Coker, Andy with Country Boy. Andy, a five star Grand Prix winner up in Spruce Meadows this summer. He's actually once again this season jumped a lot of shows in Europe as soon as the sort of the winter break started here on the East Coast after Toronto. Andy headed over with a string of horses to Europe, jumped at the likes of Liverpool and the World Cup shows at Leipzig in Germany and Amsterdam in the Netherlands just last weekend before coming back here to show these horses at Deerage. This is Country Boy for Eye Candy Jumpers. And I have to say, a lot of riders would be very pleased to see him have that down because he would be a demon in this jump off, especially with such a late draw. So they're like, oh, Andy, have one down, have four faults, come back for the World Cup on Sunday. But leave us a few dollars and a few world ranking points here against the clock in the jump off of the candy triple. Unfortunately, the plank goes as well. So suddenly on eight faults and suddenly things are looking a little dicier for qualification for Sunday. And on 12 faults, I think it is plum gone for Andy Coker and Country Boy. Our best 12 faulter is currently sitting in 38th position with more than a dozen still to jump in the first round. And Andy elects to retire. Katie Dynan in the ring, Katie, with Brago R&B. This is a horse that's given her a lot of good results at these World Cup shows over the course of the winter. Katie, being a U.S. team rider, lies 11th on our league with 25 points. She was a podium finisher in the American Gold Cup towards the beginning of the season.
Katie Dynans. Ah, oh, still on the clear, I was about to say, but has the first rail out of the Bruins and is going to be slow on the time as well. So she is going to be on four minimum and it's probably going to be five and she doesn't want any more than that because if this turns into nine, she might not be showing on Sunday afternoon. And that's where we sit. Four for jumping, one for time for Katie Dynan and Brago RB joining that group just outside the top 20, headed by Carlos Sanguerrero on a total of five. So first World Cup show of the season for Jonathan McRae. John with Aristoteles by Padanus out of a Lux mare, riding for the Windsor Show Stables. Actually, for all that a lot of horses have looked at it, we haven't seen that fence go terribly often. It's a shame it goes for John McRae coming down the line. He gets caught going into that line, but not coming out over the yellow plank. So John McRae carrying a total of eight now, and it's going to be time as well as he clears the Turkish Airlines and lines up at the last and starts to go into time penalties. 80 seconds are time allowed in this first round, and it'll be eight for jumping and two for time. Well, Quentin Judge, Double H Conrad, this is actually Quentin's first time showing today. He missed out on the earlier class. Quentin has been associated with the Double H stables for a number of years. Actually, almost immediately after Upperville last June, he came over and jumped with us in Europe at some of the big shows, Lausanne in Switzerland, Dinar in France and Saint-Tropez down in the south of France. Quentin was a World Cup finalist back in 2016. That was when the uh, finals were in their spiritual home of Gothenburg. There's several appearances in U.S. Nations Cups, including winning teams in Europe and in South America. Quentin's coming down here in nice style, and he's on a good pace as well.
Clear the last. Quentin Judge is through. It's a while since we've had a clear. He gives us our latest one since Alex Granado. It's clear round number 10. And whatever about the result of this class, that is for sure a combination that gets to come back on Sunday for the Longines FEI Jumping World Cup qualifier. Cassio Rivetti, now based here in the US. Just over a year now that he's been based back here. Cassio with Bacara de Arshin Foss. Could be our first Brazilian in the jump off. Eduardo de Menezes missing out just by a time fault. Rodrigo Pessoa with a pole down. So Cassio clear at the moment down the double of doubles. Just jinx a little bit to the left and he makes this distance even longer. And he hadn't got a lot of time to play with. Ah! Licks the front rail off that oxer. So four forts coming home. A decent chance he's going to be into time as well. He clears the last. It's four for jumping, one for time. Yet another one on that total of five. Cassio Rivetti and Bacara de Archenfoss. 27th position. So nine more to go. So that 27th position for Cassio Rivetti is home and host. Daniel Coyle with his own and Ariel Granger's legacy. By the Sangashad uh, Chippendale. This 10 year old mayor steps up to the level now, having been produced over the previous seasons by Daniel. Daniel was a World Cup winner with Farrell in Langley, British Columbia. And as a career winner back in 2018 of this Palm Beach Masters World Cup qualifier. So Daniel on the four faults as he comes around now to the Palm Beach Masters fence. Takes the net jets vertical down as well. Is he going to be clear through the Bruins? He is, but on eight faults. Needs to be a fast eight to have any hope of coming back on Sunday because certainly we're cutting some of the eights already eight faults in 79 84 for Daniel Coyle and legacy that is a little bit faster than Enrique Gonzalez goes into that 36th position but he uh, has to uh, hope that there aren't four or five riders who score better than that from amongst our last half dozen or so
on course, Skyler Riley. Skyler, who split that puissance in well in uh, Washington last winter, rides Robin de Pontoul. We've seen this horse in World Cup action several times. Skyler taking on the ride around the time of Live Oak last March, carrying the eight faults though. So again, finds herself in the same position as Daniel Coyle. On eight faults, and you know, eights are really under threat at the moment. Daniel and Legacy and Enrique Gonzalez and Chakna sit in 36th and 37th place at the moment. Skyler comes home 78 7 0. She is, for what it might be worth, the fastest of the eight falters. She takes over 36th position, pushes Daniel Coyle and Enrique Gonzalez down a place each. Pushes Paul O'Shea out of the top 40. Zoe Conte sits there in the drop zone on her nine-fault total. But it's not going to take uh, too much to start seeing some of our five-faulters, a single rail and a single time-fault, dropping out of contention. Jenny McAllister, Jenny who sits seventh on the West Coast standings with 29 points. She was top five at Split Rock and top five at Thermal. Jenny rides uh, Vicksburg Studs Escada VS. Jenny has a great relationship with the uh, Swedish breeders at Vicksburg, bringing over a lot of horses each year. Showed some very nice young Swedish warm blood horses at the Youngster Bowl competition at Split Rock in Columbus, Ohio last October. So Jenny cleared down the long related distance, the full length of this turf arena here. Comes to the double of doubles. And pulls a rail coming out of that. Rides the sea. Ah! Just wrong coming in there. They'll have to stop the clock and ring the bell because of that disturbance. But that puts her on eight faults. Almost whatever happens now because she cannot avoid time faults. Jenny McAllister has just ruled herself out of the World Cup on Sunday. I wonder if they uh, are already aware enough of that out in the warm-up that she might just head around and take the courtesy fence and retire. It's difficult to know. I mean, it's absolutely the rider's decision to decide what's the best thing for their horse because for this horse, the best thing might be, be to be asked the question again and regain its confidence and that's where she goes. And a very nice jump through that double of Bruins fences. So Jenny McAllister is going to pick up 11, and as I think that puts her straight out, yeah, 43rd position. So Nicole Simpson and Akuna Matata. Nicole, who is a winner here on day one of the show. Nicole, third at Columbus, top ten at Gold Cup with Akuna Matata, giving her 25 points so far on the East Coast Sub League. Six times a World Cup finalist. Nicole represented the U.S. at the 2002 World Equestrian Games at Jerez in Spain. 
and rode some Nations Cup squads in 2019 at Aachen in Germany and also at Jalapa in Mexico. So just cutting down on the back rail there, unfortunately, jumping into the net jets. Just backed off a little bit on her. And front rail, or the top of the vertical, jumping in to the Bruins as well. So very quickly on eight faults and just looking a little bit for control and rideability as she lines up on this final line. And sometimes as shows go on and the atmosphere gets bigger and bigger in shows, this has been Akuna Matata's Achilles heel as they start to really play up. And it's 12 for jumping, one for time here, unfortunately, for Nicole Simpson and Akuna Matata. And I say that should, unfortunately, keep them out of World Cup action on Sunday. At the moment, Zoe Conter is still there in 39th position. Paul O'Shea uh, sitting in 40th. I'll so just uh, update and make sure that that is still true. I wouldn't like to lie to you. It is true. So Paul O'Shea still in the hunt at the moment. Zoe Conter are three eight falters in Ricky Gonzalez, Daniel Coyle and Skylar Riley. And we have a literal handful, five to go in the first round before we see a jump off of at least 10 coming back to us. Yeah, we have lost one of our nine falters in Mario Deloria, Mario and Urs de la Roque down into 41st position. So eight is dangerous. Better than eight could start to feel quite comfortable about coming back for Sunday. Erin Ballard starts her round. Erin riding Fellini by Vermont. Karen Cohen's this one with Ilan Ferda. Fellini was the horse that gave uh, Aaron top fives in the Upperville and Devon Grand Prix last year. Aaron suddenly on eight faults. This is dangerous ground now. Time-wise, she could get home on eight and push another one of those nine falters out of our top 40. But it could so easily end up that she also on eight ends up going out of the final lineup. And on nine things change again eight for jumping one for time for Erin Ballard and Fellini it's a shame she didn't just push on but she goes into 40th position costs Paul O'Shea his place on the uh, leaderboard Zoe Contest still in 39th Erin Ballard in 40th and four more to come four more who could easily go in front and take uh, the qualification places away from Erin Ballard Zoe Contest Enrique Gonzalez Daniel Coyle Skylar Riley with the fastest eight falter. I think is now confirmed to come through. So eight faults will be the cut. Robin de Pontul and Skylar Riley on 78.70 could be our lowest ranked qualifier to come through. Captain Brian Canan and his top horse, Armic. What can they do around this Alan Wade track? Brian, a native of County Kerry, his wife. Jules Canan, Jules Stiller as was, was a top-level eventer for the United States, now rides for Ireland as she's riding in the two-star tour here this weekend. Brian has been a Nations Cup rider. 
top level eventer from the Irish Army Equitation School. Had a sixth place finish at Washington, but he's on eight faults now, so he's another one right in that same mix. So, Brian, through the double of doubles, carrying these eight faults. He needs to be a fast eight faulter. He needs to be faster than Skylar Riley. The score we were just talking about, 78-7-0 to come home. Eight for jumping, one for time. Changes it. Brian Canan with 81-25 goes straight out of the zone. 41st position. No World Cup, it would appear, for Captain Brian Canan for Ireland here this weekend at Deerage. Jen Gates is our next to go. Jennifer, who recently became engaged to former Palm Beach Masters winner Niall Nassar. Then with Capital Colnado. Had some very good World Cup results over the last couple of seasons. And Jen, who's back in school in New York. Continuing her biomedical studies, but still finding the time to come out and show most weekends on the World Cup tour. But it's very, very different for her now as she was really full time at the sport for a while, especially this summer in Europe. But after the Global Champions Tour show in London in early August, that was when she headed back to start her studies and become a little bit more or temporarily at least, a part-time professional athlete. Just catches the Bruins going in, but four faults is okay, five faults is okay, eight faults is dangerous. Still just 10 for our jump off here. Time is just catching her out. Four for jumping, one for time for Jen Gates and Capital Colnado. But five faults, 23rd position safely back. But she will have cost another one of our riders their place in the uh, World Cup qualifier. And that is likely to be Aaron Ballard by our calculations. So Aaron. Score pushes down to 41st position and out. Zoe Conte is in the drop zone on nine. Keen O'Connor and Valdoko Descap by number one, Diso. Irish rider. Just the one Irish rider through at the moment. That's Dara Kenny. Jumps the lifting bridge. And over the honey farm fence, Keen O'Connor with Valdoko Descap. Keen. Individual championship and Olympic medalist 
and on so many successful Irish teams over his career. Also jumped very, very well for the Valkenswald United Global Champions League team, particularly in the Super Cup final at Prague in December. Just going to take that plank down at the bottom of the course. So Kean now starts to really get into this zone of protecting this score. And it goes straight away. He's on eight. He's got to get home on eight inside the time. And he cannot afford another pole or it's in and out of the World Cup for Kean O'Connor. And there it goes. The second of the Bruins fences is down for the Irish Olympic medalist. On the final line, just 10 qualified for the jump off so far. And he's going to be on 13. 12 for jumping, one for time for Keen O'Connor and Valdoko Discap. Carl Cook is our last to go, hoping to join the jump-off starting field of 10. Carl, who's leading the Western Sub-League on 49 points. He was our winner at Sacramento. He was the runner-up at Gold Cup to Beasy and also took a top-five finish at Del Mar. The former North American young rider, gold medalist and three-time World Cup finalist, Carl Cook, with the Casal Sun Caillou. Climbs up over that Deerage Farms honey fence. And the one thing we have learnt throughout this competition is that there is no time to waste over this 80 second time allowed track and this horse is just hanging on him in front of these jumps just scrubbing a second or so I mean it was Adrian Sternlicht who really laid down the template for how to attack this course particularly here where riders wanted to go out wide to make sure of the horizontal stripe poles and Adrian went out wide with a lot of pace because a lot of riders had suddenly been shortening that turn and then picking up the rail because they thought maybe shortening the turn is the way to stay inside the time. He was in trouble there for a second. I thought he was going to jump out over the wing of the net jets. Hard shift to the left right the way through the Bruins as well. His time is good though. He's more than sub 60 seconds as he comes out of the double of doubles. Carl gets the elbows going out over that big oxer. Clears the meter 55 vertical coming home. This could be clear round number 11. Ah, it's four faults. He'll be back for the World Cup on Sunday, but no jump off today in a time of 77.07 for Carl Cook and Caillou for the United States of America. He goes into 18th, and uh, we'll look across and see our final qualifier for the uh, World Cup on Sunday, the Longines FEI Jumping World Cup of Wellington, Florida, and the 40th spot goes to the eight faults of Enrique Gonzalez and Chakna. All of our eight faults come back, so that's Daniel Coyle and Skylar Riley as well, and those placed better, the six faulters of Alexandra Thornton, Kerry McCahill, all of those five faulters, five faults covering the spread right back up to 24th. But here's our jump-off starting list. Laura Kraut, Margie Goldstein-Engel, Ashley Bond, Adrian Sternlich, Dara Kenny, who followed her immediately in the ring, Eve Jobs, the Pan American Games medalist for the United States of America with Venue de Fista Ezel, BZ Madden and Garant, her Gold Cup winner, followed immediately by Sergio Alvarez Moya and Charmeur, the Spanish Olympian. Alex Granato, last year's winner here of the World Cup with Carl Shen, and last to qualify was Quentin Judge with Double H Conrad. As you can see, the arena party here are setting the course up for the short track to come, and we'll have the action from that in a very short period of time. But one of the stories of this class was that time allowed of 80 seconds and a few riders so unlucky to just be caught out by the timers having jumped the entire course clear. And one of them is Connor Swell and Connor is with us in studio with Chris Pack. Hi guys online in here. I'm with Connor Swale who had a great round just one time fall and I believe this is your first FEI class of the year with this horse. Please tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, it is actually. It's um, Koss Van Heys. He has uh, been a partner with me now for about uh, two years, and yeah, this was our first class of the of the year, uh, first international. And I thought he had coped with the course very well. Yeah, it looked quite tough. Uh, Ten coming back, maybe nine to actually jump. What are we thinking for the jump off? Who, who looked? 
Who looked the most comfortable out there and it's going to tackle Ellen's course the best? Yeah, I mean, just when we look at the list here, there's a lot of uh, world-class riders, obviously, and, and horses. I mean, there, obviously, Laura, she starts off extremely fast rider. Um, yeah. Ashley, very fast. Adrian is on a, on a rail roll with that horse. And obviously, my compatriot, Dara, Dara Kenny, extremely fast. <laughs> BZ Madden, the same. I mean, as such, Alex Granado, he's after... Again, he won here last year, and um, again, wonderful horse. So it's it's going to be exciting to jump off, that's for sure. Well, and it's all building up to Sundays. You've obviously qualified, and so it's going to be a great jump off. I think we're going to get to it before the rain starts. So uh, good luck, everybody, and uh, we'll see you soon. Well, thank you very much to Chris back there in conversation with Connor Swell as we build up towards the... Uh, Qualifier, jump off, and I can tell you that we had 10 qualified. We're actually going to see eight of them, Margie Goldston Engel and Eve Jobs, electing not to show this afternoon. They've got their qualification spot for Sunday. That, for them, is job done. We'll be back to the action in just a few minutes' time, as eight will show for the lion's share of a $72,900 prize fund in the Candy Triple Qualifier from the Palm Beach Masters.
So welcome back to the Palm Beach Masters. We have eight of the ten who qualified coming back for the jump off here. Eve Jobs and Margie Goldstein Engel electing to sit out the jump off. So they will take points for ninth and tenth and their place on Sunday in the World Cup qualifier. We're going to start with Laura Kraut and Kon Fu and none better to start. Hoping to follow in her partner Nick Skelton's footsteps to trailblaze a jump off and take it to ultimate victory just like he did in Rio with Quickstar. So the U.S. Olympic and World team gold medalist, Laura Kraut and St. Bride Farms, Confu. They were clear round number one. Of course, starts out jumping what was the last fence backwards. This second Turkish Airlines, numbered as number 16, and now a roll back here to both parts of this Longines double, 6AB. Down the ring now, you can see here he's taken the plank away from the top of this fence, just allowing them to attack it a little bit more. He's got this same tough rollback turn to the horizontal stripe Palm Beach Masters. Laura bravely on the angle across that big wide oxer. He didn't skinny it up as they sometimes do to try and encourage them to really ride. This is the last on the jump off. Oh, paddles down between the two rails. 38-78, it is double clear for Laura Kraut and Kon Fu. Well, it's interesting to see the side angle because from the head on it looked like actually Confu just paddled between the two rails but actually powered out over that Bruins Oxer. 38.78 is our reference time. Margie Goldstein Engel was our next qualifier. She doesn't come back. It's Ashley Bond who rides next. Ashley, who had some uh, good results with us in the Palm Beach Masters Series last year, including being on the uh, Israeli team that were on the podium in the Longines FEI Jumping Nations Cup here in uh, Deerage. So Ashley Bond, Ashley and Donatello out over this. 38-78 to beat. This is punchy. Ashley rode such a good first round. Has she got it here? A couple of seconds to go, 38-78. Ashley was one of the ones that Connor picked off the start list. And 38-08 proves he was right. Double clear and into the lead. But not a huge amount taken out of Laura Kreitz's time. We've got some faster rounds to come. Adrian Sternlicht is one we're excited to see after her very, very forward ride in the first round. Let's see what she can turn in here in the jump off. But for the moment, it's Ashley Bonds in the driving seat. So here is Adrian Sterling, the US World Team Gold Medalist. Adrian and Benny's legacy. Third of the eight we will see for this jump off here this evening. The day not over here at the Palm Beach Masters either with the North Star final coming up a jump off class in the Sand School behind us. That's our feature class tonight from the Sand School. The final of that under the lights. And tomorrow, we are actually going to move our Turkish Airlines jump off class over to the sand as well. We're expecting bad weather coming in. We've got grey clouds hovering over South Florida at the moment. As Adrian Sternlicht and Benny's legacy roll back to this. Nice jump there. What can they do against 38.08? Puts themselves to the right-hand side of the net jets, which means they got there that little bit quicker. And the two-time World Cup winner moves it on again 37 82 they're not moving huge amounts in front of each other but they are consistently moving in front of each other adrian sternlicht is in the lead now for the united states of america four more u.s chances as well Derek Henney with his own and Ann Thompson's classic dream. 
next to go. 37.82 to beat for the Irish rider from inside the world's top 10 on the Longines World Rankings. Rails gone. Both rails gone there through the double, so it's eight faults. So Dara Kenny won't be featuring in the winner's circle here this evening, unfortunately. So Dara, 41 seconds on the clock, eight jumping faults, fourth at the moment. So 41 on the nose, and here's where it started to come apart for uh, Dara with Classic Dream, the 10-year-old Cholester Skelding. So we've seen four of the eight we will show. Eve Jobs was also a withdrawal alongside Margie Goldstein Engel. So we turn it over to BZ Madden and Garant. Garant, a winner of the American Gold Cup as an eight-year-old now in his nine-year-old year. Can he take this candy triple qualifier and go in the best possible form into Sunday's World Cup? Wastes a little bit of time ballooning up in the air over that green is the new blue, the sustainability jump. Easy, really leading around with her shoulder on that rollback turn to the Longines fence. Clear the yellow Chinese fence down at the bottom of the ring. He got himself back off that fence. He was really, really athletic. Just twisted himself out of trouble because those short turns were into exactly the same situation. Alan Wade is asking them to make the turn that was costing people that pole in the first round. BZ Madden. Beasy, 38.78. It is third. It is joint third. She is equal to the hundredth of a second with Laura Kreit. So here's where we are. Adrian Sternlicht is the time to beat 37.82. Ashley Bond in second, Laura Kreit and BZ Madden. Two old teammates, two great competitors with each other, equal to the hundredth around this course. Dara Kenny in fifth, Margie and Eve Jobs electing not to start, so they're in equal sixth at the moment. So riding for another spring season here in Wellington, Florida. It is Sergio Alvarez Moya, Spanish championship rider. Been a lot of good team performances for Spain. Sergio has been in the mix right through a European Championships week. He's been in the mix right through a World Cup finals week. Sergio and Shamu are set out on their jump off odyssey here, trying to beat 37.82. It's like he gave that a hard rob. We actually saw the lower plank wobble. Clear and pushing on down here to the yellow. A couple of strides away. He knew he just wasn't going to have the leave out, so he sat up, managed his last couple of strides. He jumps across. The striped rails, two fences to go up here in front of the VIP, 37.82. 
This is one of the world's top, top riders, and he's about to snatch this away. 37-23. Sergio Alvarez Moya makes it yet another new leader here at Deeridge as he goes into front. 37-23. He's half a second faster than Adrian Sternig. They are literally slicing this. Nobody can really make a name for themselves and move it right the way forward. Sergio is only one and a half seconds faster than Laura Kraut and BC Madden, who hold equal fourth. Alex Granato and Carl Chen W. Winners of the World Cup here last year. Alex also the winner this season of the World Cup qualifier at Columbus, Ohio. He's been a Pan-American Games rider. He's been a Nations Cup finals rider for the United States of America. He proves himself time and time again, whether it's individual or team competition. They're a great combination. Well, early rail, unfortunately for Alex, has the Turkish Airlines down there at number two on the jump off course. And uh, tip of the cap, going to retire on course in the jump off. Just one further qualifier, a World Cup finalist back in Gothenburg in 2016, Quentin Judge with Double H Farms, Double H Conrad. 37-23 to beat to try and take the win for the United States of America. Otherwise, it will be Sergio Alvarez Moya in the winner's circle here at Deeridge Farms, taking the Candy Tribble pre-qualifier for Sunday's World Cup. We are also just five minutes away from the start of jumping in the final of the North Star Tour. If you want to, uh, after this, switch streams as well and watch the culmination of the uh, Sunset Challenge jumping here in Palm Beach Masters this weekend. Tomorrow, our four-star class, the Turkish Airlines jump-off class, is at one o'clock. And because of the weather that's being forecast here for South Florida, it will be held in the Sand Arena tomorrow. Turkish Airlines is down just as it was a moment or two ago for Alex Granato. So four faults and it's a win for Sergio Moya as five of our riders will have jumped double clear in this candy triple class out of 10 who qualified for the jump off. Two didn't come forward. Alex Granato retires. Eight faults for Dara Kenny and we'll see what score Quentin Judge will bring home with Double H Conrad. Thirty-eight, thirty-eight, and that total of four. He's a shade faster than Laura Crowd and BZ Madden, but their clears keep them in front. Quentin takes points and prize money for sixth place today. Sergio Alvarez Moya then becomes our winner for Spain. Adrian Sternlich, Benny's legacy in second. Ashley Bond, Donatello third. Laura Crack, Confu and BZ Madden, Garrett equal fourth. Quentin Judge taking the sixth spot with our fastest four falter in the jump. Off. Five double clears. Dara Kenny on eight. Alex Granato retired on course. And Margie and Eve didn't start. Jessica Springsteen, Eduardo de Menezes. Looking down, Rowan Willis, Connor Swell, Brian Mogray all on the single time fault. Karen Pole on two faults and Rodrigo Pessoa on four faults. 
with the uh, 17th spot, fastest four falter in the first round. So, Sergio Alvarez Moya was our winner with Shamur. I say no stranger to success anywhere in the world, even here in South Florida. Sergio Alvarez Moya bested everyone, but it was a real needle match. The jump off here, uh, double clears, all only separated by one and a half seconds total. Sergio was uh, half a second faster than Adrian Sternlicht in second place with Benny's Legacy. He really made his experience count, though, around this course. Jumping on the turf and over top-level designers courses so often in Europe to bring home the bacon on 37-23 for the win in the Candy Tribble pre-qualifier. So that was the winning time, 37.23 for Sergio Alvarez Moya. Awards coming up here in the grass arena that we'll use again in the Longines FEI Jumping World Cup qualifier on Sunday. Tomorrow's four-star class, the Turkish Airlines jump off, will be in the Sand School at 1 o'clock. And we're about to turn our attention to the Sand School as well for the finale to the North Star Sunset Challenge Tour with their jump off competition for those two star riders. Join us over on the other stream or stay here where we'll throw it down to Adam Cromarty in the bowl for awards coming up from the Palm Beach Masters 2020. Testing. Well, I have my sound back, so we're starting off and underway with the $10,000 North Star Tour Final 1. 83 starting us off as DC3 Cooper Sonic. Emily Gerhoff is riding for the Sport of Game LLC out of Wellington. 83, first to go. Now we have 31 in the heats in this division. Well, we are getting ready for that award ceremony here this afternoon, but don't forget the civil reception will be taking place after our award ceremony, and all are welcome. Please do join us in VIP hospitality for the triple reception following our award ceremony. While the stage is set, we are ready for our award ceremony, and they come back. All the top six that have made it through to that jump off and then have come out on top here in the Candy Triple Qualifier for 2020. Congratulations to each and every one of them. Some spectacular athletes, some great horses, as always here at the Palm Beach Masters. And it's great to have some of the very best in the world come forward here today. And we're going to see the top six. They are coming back for that award ceremony in just a couple of moments' time. Don't forget as well, the Candy Tribble reception and VIP hospitality follows. But for now, let's welcome back our top six, led in by your winner for Spain, Sergio Varez Moye and Shamur. Well, Tamilard 70. And Emily finishing there in 66.82, but with eight faults. Second place takes us to the USA, Adrian Sternlicht and Benny's Legacy. Ashley Bond takes the third for Israel, Donatello. 
fourth place, and it's a joint fourth. Laura Crite with Colin and Beasley Jordan Madden the with second. Garant. And finally, our sixth place goes to Quentin Judge and Double H Conrad. And for amateur sequestrian, it is Alexa Pessoa, number 183. While joining us here in this award ceremony for the Candy Tribble qualifier is Christy McRae, Campbell Hudkins, and Larry Tribble. It's great to have you all with us as we get ready to present to these world-class athletes. And of course, this is a very special competition, actually, because it is the Candy Tribble Memorial. Candy Tribble's pure love for sport and the sport of show jumping was really undeniable. She really developed her passion for the art of riding through her children, and she tirelessly sat ringside and supported her family in the ring all the way to the show jumping's very best championships. Candy was the proud owner of numerous top show jumping horses through her Windsor show stables. When you think back of like After Eight and Primo, Vegas, Promised Land, Special Lux, those were just a few of the memorial stars. And uh, why Roman Amich take one with her daughter, Chris, in the saddle, jumped the individual gold at the 2011 Pan American Games. Tribble also served on the United States Equestrian Foundation's Owners Committee, and she really loved watching her children, including Chris, and her husband, Jonathan, represent their country. Candy was such a loyal supporter at the Pan Beach Masters Series and loved going here to Deerridge Farm. She really had Well, we get a first clear coming from Alexa with Jordan. She Time, 6.7.81. Sun up to sunset, watching every single competition. And she just loved the sport. She is such a legend, and it's a great honor that we can have the Candy Tribble Memorial here at the Pan Beach Masters. And they now step forward to congratulate our winner for Spain, Sergio Alvarez Moye and Shamur. Very exciting jump off today. The lead it is 48. It is Favorita de Moose. Our winning time. And just behind that was 37.82. And, and the owner rider is Maud Cristal out of Santa Barbara, California. And this is the nine year old, place. number 48. Then we move down to congratulate Ashley Bond of Israel and Donatello that takes third. We had a joint fourth here today, two athletes with an identical time, but it looks like we go to BZ Madden first with Garant, who takes fourth. Moving on down the line and saying a very well done to Laura Kraut, also in joint fourth today with Kon Fu. And then final congratulations go to Quentin Judge of the USA with Double H Conrads. He takes the sixth place. Well, once again, a huge thank you there to Christine, to Campbell, to Larry, and of course, uh, the rest of the team involved well, that's our there. second it's clear really coming from Ward and Favorite the Moves in the round, number 48. And we're going to continue on by asking everyone with us today to please rise, remove cover, as we get ready to salute our winner, Sergio Alvarez Moye, with the playing of his national anthem. And here's 190, it's Durban 27, and uh, representing Skillman, New Jersey, Samantha Johnson, owner rider. The 12 year old Durban, number 27, number 190.
Well, congratulations once again, Sergio Avaris Moye taking that victory for Spain. And we do ask that you please stay with us because we have another special award. And this one is for the owner of our winning horse. And this horse owns Bal Avaris Moye Horses. So it looks like Sergio will be representing himself here. But this is the Sue Grange Owners Award. It's presented to the owners of the winning horse. And we all know back in 2017, show jumping lost a dear friend. Sue Grange, a legendary equestrian icon who owned Lothronian Farms with her husband. And we have also clear. 68.9 to the Durban 27. And, uh, race and horses as Samantha well. And the clear. farm was home to the Cheltenham Gold Cup Horse Show, a show that featured a World Cup qualifier and boasted riders from all across the continent. For two decades, the farm supported the Canadian equestrian team, and in particular, Canadian rider Ian Miller, who rode one of their horses at uh, Glorian Farms in style to the On course medal now, we have 218. It's Ben Ovedezi. Here's Maggie McIllary. She's the owner and rider. And, and this is an entry out of Amherst, New Hampshire. And this is and a seven-year-old, number two, one eight. Horses and We congratulate once again our winner, Sergio Alvarez Moye, with Ariel Grange stepping forward to make that presentation. Well, with all that said and done, we are going to salute our top six now, leading us off on the victory gallop today. Sergio Alvarez Moye, your winner for Spain. And here he comes past once again, your winner, Sergio Vares Moye for Spain. Ashley Bond, who finishes in third. BZ Madden. Laura Kreitz. And finally, Quentin Judge. And then coming round once again, all on his own, your winner for Spain, Sergio Vares Moye, Shamur. Five faults, seven three point one three five. Well, that concludes competition here in the Grass Arena, but already started over in the Sand Arena is our final competition that will feature under the lights at this event. They almost look spectacular under the lights and there's plenty of hospitality to enjoy. So make sure you head over to the Sand Arena as we take we in that two-star competition courses. here today. Move also, on. the triple reception is taking place Angela over Kubert in the hospitality the area in Hardell VIP. And a reminder Park. to all our athletes as well, well all competition tomorrow, that's Number all competition here on Saturday, will take place over in the Sand Arena starting at 9 a.m. Then we'll be back in here on Sunday for the Longines FEI Jumping World Cup Wellington. But for the whole team here in the Grass Arena, enjoy the rest of your evening, and we'll see you over in the Sand Arena tomorrow at 9 a.m.